His pussycat had four propellers placed into its paws. And I wanted to know what kind of man would do this to his own pet. One day, Orville got killed by a car here, just around the corner here. But I immediately knew that as soon as we had his body, that I was going to do something with him. I was going to make a point out of his untimely death. There he is, Orville Copter. With a local engineer called Arian, Bart had created the world's first remote-controlled flying dead cat. We're, we're made of stuff, and if you die, you, you, you end up as stuff, and you can do things to that stuff and to, to, to keep it around. One day, he was just dead in the backyard. Oh, mother's milk. I wanted to make a cheese out of that. Breast milk? Yeah. As in your partner's breast milk? Or... Yeah. I remember when one of my grandmas died that I stood there at the bed and I saw the body of my, of my grandma, the woman that we all loved as kids. But I couldn't resist prodding her. It's like, what does it feel like when you're not here anymore? It was stiff and cold, and I wanted to know. Was it difficult cutting up your own pet? I have no problem taking the skin off a cat, even my own cat. After it's dead, it's not a cat anymore. It's just carbon in a shape, a cat shape. Bart invited me into his shed, where it became clear that his cat was not the first animal he'd been trying to make fly, and certainly wasn't his last. It's an ostrich. Having phoned every ostrich farm in the Netherlands, Bart eventually got his hands on one that had died during the cold winter months. It's got a 50 kilo lift and it's 12,000 watts. I was witnessing the world's most famous flightless bird taking to the skies. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an inventor. I'm making things fly that I usually can't. And it's wonderful just to stand outside and all the, the parents with kids, they just gather around and they laugh and they make pictures and they talk about it for two days afterwards. What better thing to do? That's, that's a very, very good feeling. And I know the ostrich would have wanted it no other way. What Bart and Arian were doing was clearly bizarre, and to some people, even offensive. But they were far from alone. Creations from dead creatures had become popular around the world, from expensive art to eBay auctions. Social media sites with hundreds of thousands of followers were dedicated to the world's weirdest taxidermy. With fashion and interior design pushing the trend, I wondered if death had now become a legitimate business.